I just got access to the new ChatGPT model, GPT-40, and I'm gonna compare it in this video versus GPT-4, the paid version. So it's gonna be comparing the new version that is free to everyone versus the paid version. In the last video, a lot of people were asking, well, why would I keep paying for GPT-4 if this new model is free and it beats GPT-4? Good question. I'm gonna to try to answer it in this video. So let me share some of these numbers they just released. So accessing GPT-4.0 with ChatGPT in the free tier, this is what they said here. It will be limited on how often it is available and is completely based on current usage of the ChatGPT platform. So they're not assigning any numbers to it. But when GPT-4.0 basically becomes unavailable or gets limited, you automatically get switched back to 3.5. But you do get access to all these things that I mentioned in the last video. You get access to data analysis, file uploading, browsing the web, discovering and using GPTs in the GPT store, the vision capabilities, everything that comes with the paid version of ChatGPT, you get it now with this GPT 4.0. Now, this is the free tier. You also have it inside of Teams and you have it in the Plus accounts. As I'm recording this, I have it in my Plus account and I have it in my Teams account. I do not yet have it in my free account. So check for yourself. I'll show you where to kind of find the setting. I also have it in the mobile app too. Just got released at the same time. But with the paid plan, basically it looks like you get a higher usage limit. So it says Plus users will be able to send 80 messages every three hours with GPT-4.0 and up to 40 messages every three hours with GPT-4, which was the case before, but it still says we may reduce the limit during peak hours to keep GPT-4 and 4.0 accessible to a wider number of people. And it also says if you have the Teams plan, which I also have, you get a higher usage, but it doesn't say exactly how many messages per hour. So a little bit confusing here, they're not really spelling it out, but they're saying everyone now has access to this new model which I'll show you this benchmark. In the benchmark testing, GPT-4.0 beats GPT-4 Turbo. Okay, so this is the pink line here. And you could see in a bunch of the different tests, in fact, all of them except this last one, it outperforms every model, not just GPT-4, but all the other models, Claude 3 Opus, Gemini, and everything else. And I'll put a link to this page also, but let's go ahead and take this for a head-to-head -head test, GPT-4.0 versus GPT-4. Okay, back on chatgpt.com. This is the URL, by the way, now, chatgpt.com instead of chat.openai.com. If you come up here, if you have GPT-4.0, it's gonna show up on top. Newest and most advanced model. GPT-4, advanced model for complex tasks. The very first prompt I wanna show you is a text summary prompt. A lot of us use these chatgpt models to summarize large amount of text. So I'm gonna give us some text and I'm gonna ask for two summaries, one two to three sentences long and another one five to six sentences long. Let's see how it does. As a reference, I'll come to this page right here and I'm just gonna copy the entire page. I'll go back and I'll paste that text here. Here's my short summary. GPT-4.0 is OpenAI's new flagship model that integrates audio, vision, and text capabilities available to ChatGPT free users plus and team tier, as well as the OpenAI API. And this has done a pretty good job so far. As I'm reading these two, the length is correct. The tone is really good. It's not overly promotional. It doesn't sound like the normal chat GPT at first glance. Let me also run it in GPT-4. Well, I noticed down here, you get this little option right here where you could change the model just within the same chat. Smart and fast, that's the new one, GPT-4. Let's click on it. Wow, just like that, I could do the comparison between the two in the same chat. I don't have to open a new window, a new chat. Really interesting, I like that option. Okay, this is now the regular GPT, so ignore what's happening up here because I use that new function that compares the two in the same chat. So as I'm looking at this, this did a good job on the length, but the tone is not as good. Boasting enhanced speed is something I would maybe only see in a promotional ad, not what I wanted out of this summary. And I usually have to refine my prompt to get it to move things like this or give it a set of instructions to go ahead and ignore this type of tone. And I tested three different web pages, and so far GPT-4.0 gave me the tone I was looking for. They both got the length right. They both did a good job summarizing the text but GPT-4.0 is the winner right now as far as tone goes. Okay, our next prompt is gonna be comparing text output, not summarizing, just writing something from scratch. And here's my prompt. Imagine we're launching a new software to help businesses track social media analytics, write a short, punchy 
product description and a little bit more. All these prompts I'm going to add in the description of this video if you want to test this out for yourself. Let's go ahead and start with GPT-4 here. Let me send this out. Introducing ProPulse Ultimate Social Media Analytics Tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare this with this new version. I love this new comparison tool. So this is the GPT-4.0. Unlock the power of your social media presence with Insight Track. Pretty good name. Our cutting edge tool offers real-time analytics. And then to compare it to the other one, I just have to click this back arrow and read through here. And to me, as I'm reading through this, this is kind of even. I wouldn't really give one a score over the other one. I think they both did a good job here coming up with what we're looking for. Again, I asked for something promotional, so boosts your ROI, things like that are going to be okay for the prompt that I gave it. Okay, next on the list is multimodal understanding. I want to see how good the vision capability works over here. So I have this image that was basically the benchmark that I showed you in the beginning. Analyze this image and explain to me in table format what's going on. And this time I'm starting with GPT-4 here. So let's see what we come up with. Okay, overall, it looks like it's doing a really good job. It's creating the table for us. It's turning that chart into this table format. And all the numbers seem to be okay. The only thing I noticed here, it says GPT-4.0 is red, but this looks kind of pink to me. And the numbers are right. So that is GPT-4 doing this multimodal test. Let's go ahead and check with our GPT-4.0. 3.5 is not going to be available because it's not going to have vision capability. So I couldn't even force to test that one. Okay, this one is using data analysis here. And it looks like it's a little bit slower. GPT-4 seemed to answer me pretty quickly. 4.0 right now is doing the work and it looks like it's taking a little bit longer. And he gave us an error message, but he's still trying to create that table. Okay, at first glance, the table looks pretty good. It did not make the mistake or even do the analysis of the color coding that the GPT-4 version did for us. And he got this right too. So GPT-4 made a mistake, but he gave us a little bit extra. So he didn't really need to do this part, but he actually created this little extra part where I think he should have said pink here instead of red. It says pink for Gemini Ultra, which is not correct. Gemini Ultra was blue. Okay, so he got some of that color analysis wrong, but this one is just completely skipped that part, which is fine because I only asked for a table. So I think this also gets a slight advantage on GPT-4.0 compared to GPT-4. Okay, now let's see image generation. Let's see if Dolly 3 works the same way between 4 and 4.0. Okay, so this is inside of ChatGPT-4. This is an image of two AI robots head to head in battle. Let's go ahead and check 4.0. Okay, this one gave me a thumbnail size one. So this was 4.0. And I actually like it a lot more. This is a lot more head to head than what I got over here. And this is square shape. I did not give it dimensions. I just kind of wanted to see what an image would be without telling it I want this size or that size. So if this is the case, GPT-4.0 again beats GPT-4 here too. Now let's see if we could do a decent job with research. We're going to basically see if AI could potentially disrupt the accounting industry. And I want to see if it could pull up use cases and things like that for us and give us relevant articles and reports. Let's see if it searches the web. Nice, it's going to search the web over here. This is GPT-4 right now. It's finding a website, okay? And it's given us eight different sites searched. And this was in real time. I just wanted to kind of show you how fast it was working. Let me click on some of these links just to make sure it's not making up links here. Cause sometimes in my previous testing, sometimes it made up a link. Okay, not bad. This went to the right place. Let's test out another link just to make sure. Okay, same link here. Let's test out this one. Okay, good. It is actually pulling up the right links over here and letting us link to them. Now let's go ahead and test out the GPT-4.0 model with the same prompt. Searching very fast. Search five websites. It is not giving us links though, but it is giving us a really fast. Okay, there we go. We got the sources on the bottom over here. Let me see if we give us reference to the sources. Typically, you'll have like a little one, two, three here next to these, and it does not do that. But it did give us the sources. Let me make sure these go to a real website. Okay, accounting solution. Okay, as I'm looking at this, I like the formatting of GPT-4 when it comes to research. I just think it's a lot better to have the reference and the resource right next to the bullet point that it created for us for easier citation here if you're writing some kind of research paper. 
But this did do a good job as I'm reading it. I kind of like the tone. It did a really nice job giving us very practical points and very step-by-step -step guides over here. But the reference, the sources reference, I just prefer the other model. And they're pretty close right now. So I wouldn't say one beats another in research. Again, this is just very early testing. So far, I would say this research is even. And let's go ahead and test this out for the very famous test of writing Python code for a game of Snake that we could run on our computer and ask for a step-by-step -step guide on how to run that on our computer. Let's send that out. Okay, this is the output of the Snake game. It ran without a single problem here and it starts pretty quick. Okay, let's see if I could catch one of these. And okay, everything's working well. Let me run into the wall quit or press C to play again. Okay, starts here. All right, very nice. This ended up working exactly like I want using GPT-4. Now let's find out GPT-4.0. Let's see what that gives us. And here's GPT-4.0. I started a new chat here, the same exact prompt. This is the game he gave us. This time he gave us the step-by-step -step in the beginning. The other one gave us the step-by-step -step at the end after we wrote the code. So I copied the code here, made a text file. Let me run that one. Okay, interesting. So everything looks the same. It starts here, but we got ourselves a score. Let's see if it actually works. Let me go ahead and catch one of these. Oh, there you go. Score is one. Oh, and the speed is actually much, much slower how a typical snake game starts. The other one started really, really fast. And this one, it looks like it's increasing speed as I catch more. Oh, wow. That is much, much better. Let me run into the wall here to make sure it ends the game. Okay, I ran into myself and he ended a game. If I run into the wall, also ends the game and resets the score. Works perfectly. And in this, again, both of them gave us a snake game, but GPT-40 gave us a snake game that increases speed as we go. It doesn't start with a really fast dot. It also gave us a score, so much better user experience here. And they both worked function after that. But again, I got a better game, so GPT-40 beats GPT-4 once again. And if you're a paid user of GPT-4 like I am, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? We now got a better large language model in GPT-40. It has all the capabilities of the paid version. So I'm a little confused about the release. Are they going to release a much better version, GPT-5 maybe, for us paid users? Or is this only based on the usage limit? Right now we have 80 messages per every three hours on this paid version and the free version, they didn't give us a number. So maybe that is gonna be significantly limited in the free accounts. So if you have the free accounts and you get this option, I only have it in my paid account right now, and you get severely limited, I could see that being a reason to upgrade. That's the only reason I upgraded to the Teams plan, for example, to get more usage when I had ChatGPT4. I just wanted to go from 30 to 100 or 40 to 100, that gave me a huge bump before. So if it's not the usage limit, I don't really see the other benefit of paying for GPT-4 over G GPT-4. Oh, so a real confusing release, an exciting one because now everyone has access to this best GPT model, something I've been trying to get people to upgrade to for a year because it just, it's a vast improvement over GPT-3.5, but kind of weird for paid users now, I think. We're all a little conflicted here why we would pay for GPT-4 over GPT-4.0 if, if the limitation is not that big of a difference for the usage. But we'll find out soon. I'm sure they're going to give us more updates. And if you subscribe to the channel, I'll make sure I keep you updated on all the new updates and all the head-to-head -head testing. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.